Welcome to today's video guys and I have to start off by saying unfortunately yesterday I made a mistake and we need to fix that right away and that is my rotors. I put them on the wrong sides so my uh, my left is on my right, my right is on my left. Um, easiest way to tell is just by the slots and the craziest thing is, is I knew this but I didn't even think to check that or anything when I was putting them on. I was just, I don't know, I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind until you guys all started saying it in the comment section. So I'm gonna quickly put you guys down, do a time lapse and switch these out as quickly as I can. And then I wanna get into doing some road tuning on this thing. And I need to try and get the front tires flipped because I do have a big six hour drive that I'm planning to take the Skyline on um down south on friday and i want to use this car so i want to get as much as i can out of these tires flipping them with the bit of camber wear that's already on there should be fine for me to get there and back i'm not planning to do any more events on these these are pretty well worn but if i can at least get my long drive out of it we'll be fine And just like that, I've now got the rotors on the correct sides, so you can see now that the slots are actually going inwards. Um, super rookie mistake, and the craziest thing is, I know that, I've had that issue before and learned the hard way, and I guess last night I was just too occupied trying to get it done late at night that I forgot to check that. So, kind of a little bit of a dumb moment, but right now, I am going to head to Up Garage because I need to get those front tires flipped and swapped so that when I go on that big drive that I've got planned this weekend, um, I've got the most meat possible in that camber section because right now there's a little bit of camber wear there and I don't want to make it any bad and I'm not going to be doing another event on these tires but I'd love to be able to get as much out of them as I can for a long trip. So let's go to Up Garage. We'll be able to check out some wheels and some parts and stuff like that. It is around payday here so this is normally when it's the best time to go to Up Garage. They bring out everything. So hopefully we can find some cool parts as well um, but for now I'm just gonna drive probably gonna stop at McDonald's and get a happy meal I think I, I definitely feel like a cheeseburger and fries so I'm gonna do that we'll pick this up once we're at up garage and they're working on the car I just went to up garage and I'm now going home to then come back again um, I'd completely forgotten about this um, but a lot of workshops here in Japan have a JCI rule where your car has to meet JCI standards which essentially means like a bunch of things for example like your wheels can't be poking past the fender and if they are they legally are not allowed to touch and work on the car it's to do with insurance and all this other kind of stuff and um, yeah long story short they have no problem with like flipping my front wheels the only problem is that my rear wheels have the tiniest bit of poke and even though it's only the sidewall of the tire with a bit of stretch and stuff it's still technically they they can't allow it into their workshop so what i'm going to do is go home put some other tires and wheels on the front and i'm just going to give them my wheels and tires that i want flipped they're going to flip them for me and that'll be done so it's a little bit frustrating but at least they're open to apm and i got plenty of time to do it so i'm gonna duck home switch out the wheels and put them in the back repeat this and then uh then we'll be good <laughs> these kinds of things are everywhere in japan like there's a rule book and people in japan always go by the rules and what's in the book so yeah you have to definitely like the only places that kind of allow it are generally like workshops that specifically work on high performance cars like yashio factory and places like that so it's a bit frustrating but it is what it is back home got some rgds on the front the gold ones and uh got the wed sports off to the side let's see what these look like hey things gonna be you thought it was monster truck it's gonna be even more monster truck spec now yeah that actually doesn't look that bad not too bad at all i left the spaces on there so there's a little bit of poke there <laughs> but it's all good that'll be fine now i do need to remember that one of these tires has a huge flat spot on it from those massive handbrake entries I was doing at Scuba 1000 circuit 
um, which is this one here. So it's going to have a nice little duh, 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 feeling in the steering wheel as I'm driving to up garage. But that's okay because we're just getting these flipped. See, this is what I'm talking about. See the camber wear just on the edge here? Hasn't split or separated the tire at all yet. It's the perfect time for me to flip these so that I can then use this meat here. Um, now bear in mind, I'm not going to do another event on these. Like I said, uh, these are literally just so that I can use them for driving and actually get my money's worth out of them. These things last forever. I'm actually really pumped because I'm going to be trying some new compounds of the new Valinos. Um, by the way, I, I finally know how to pronounce this. So per gear, it, it's, it's meant to be for a perfect gear is what this is this name is for so i used to say like pergia pergia like i it's per gear so like short for perfect gear so there you guys go i finally know how to pronounce it um and that aside i want to try they have a an even more grippier compound than the zero eight r's so i want to try those on the fronts of my s15 and skyline and in the rear now they have the griva um c's that are a special compound which is essentially 300 horsepower and up um, so I'm really pumped to give that a go as well, which has dropped down from 360 tread wear to 300 tread wear. And apparently they last forever. So my next lot of tires that I'll be buying will definitely be those. So anyways, that aside, let me get these loaded up and everything and let's go back to up garage. We are now back for round two. Hopefully no problems this time. Just dropped the tires off. The guys are in there switching them over for me now. We're gonna go take a look and see what goodies are here. Just in the seat section here, <laughs> would you look at this thing? It's 29 bucks, but they literally like grab some old curtain fabric. <laughs> Sorry, this is so funny. <laughs> Someone would totally love that in like their beat a missile for sure. Look at it. <laughs> That's like a hurt seat, royalty seat for sure. <laughs> Crack up. Man, it's crazy how much just beat up old 32 GTR seats sell for. It's like 350 bucks and look at those tears. You guys have no idea how depressed I am right now. I just saw these and got so excited, nearly went to carry them to the counter to buy them for my Skyline because mine are broken with tabs, like all snapped off. Only to realize they're the non-Xeon ones. So, yeah. Rip. So these are the non-turbo lights. They normally came out with non-Xeons, like the cheaper headlights. The casing is the same. And if I knew what I was doing, I'd be able to switch the casing, but I'd rather not. So, super bummed about that. These are really good condition too. Oh well, bargain for someone else who actually has a non-turbo, uh, non-Xeon Skyline, I guess. So this is pretty epic. Full supercharger kit for a BMW 530i E60. That's sick. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this here in Japan. Hmm, what brand is it? Does it have a brand? P.E.S. Hmm. G Power apparently is the brand. Comes with the intake manifold and everything. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. Makes me wanna just buy a BMW just to install that kit on it. That's cool. Comes with airflow meter. I wanna look at the front of it. I wanna look at the spoolie boy. Anyways, that's pretty cool. It's so sick that you can find random stuff like that here at Up Garage. The guys finished with the tires and I've already got them loaded in the car, but I figured we'd take a quick look at some of the things that are here. This thing's pretty sick. Look at that little K car. I love that. I don't think there's many other cars here. There's a really nice Subaru over here. Running at some Advan Yokohama RSs by the looks of it, those wheels. Such a clean look with that white. I love it. And then over here, let's see if there's anything under. Not really, hey. It's not too many cars here. There is a 180SX, like one of the staff cars over there, which I think we've seen before, but otherwise pretty, pretty empty right now. Still a couple hours before closing time too, but time to bounce, I think. Also, what do you guys think about my Skyline with 18s in the front? Do you think it looks good? Hmm, it's giving me bad ideas. How good do those brakes look though? Since I left Up Garage, I've been doing a bunch of road tuning and I think I've got the idle dialed pretty good. Turn the AC off, it stays stable. Turn the AC on, we're good. And we're still sitting around our like 0 0.93, 0 0.95 AFR range, which is great. Um, so I think we're golden there. 
Um, and I have, um, I'm trying to schedule some time with Darren uh, tomorrow so that uh, I can go and do some, uh, some power runs and stuff like that. And we're just gonna touch up a few things with just like drivability. And um, yeah, it's just kind of basic stuff, but this thing should be then dialed perfectly and it should be good to hit some pretty big events once I get back. Now, this is probably gonna be more of a, it's gonna evolve into more of kind of like a, a fun, crazy high horsepower build. Um, by the Like at the end of this year, I should be starting, especially once I get my shop, my goals are to pretty much rip the engine out of this thing. Uh, so there's a lot of plans for this car, as you guys know, I've been talking about it all year, but all the COVID stuff has just, it's really affected everything. And it, it's so hard for me to do anything and plan anything when there's just so many delays and uncertainty everywhere. So once I have my shop, that kind of changes everything. I'm not relying on other workshops and their time and space and stuff like that as well. And we should be able to knock this out pretty quick. So for now though, I want this thing to be perfectly dialed, mainly because I really wanted to just prove that the stock setup with this thing is super reliable and it makes really good power for what I've been using it for. And it really has. So I'm pretty happy with it. Time warping ahead, a little day night with the wife. Otsukare-sama, kanpai. This is our favorite, um, what, what is it? Uh, Thai, right? Thai food. I'm, I'm so Asian. You know how there's like, there's like Tex-Mex food that's not really Mexican food, but it's like kind of, it's like, you know, yeah. everyone's spin on Mexican food outside of Mexico. Yeah, so this is like the Tex Thai. It's not exactly traditional Thai, it's kind of Thai. You mean Jap Thai? Because Tex-Mex is Mexican food made in Texas. Oh really? Is that what that means? I had no idea. My mind is actually blown. I just, I just thought Tex-Mex was some way of saying it's not real, authentic Mexican food. Yeah, that's what it means. I didn't know that. This is how uneducated my husband is, guys. Help me. Hey, ask me about an RV, and I got you. How about those slotted brakes? Brakes, though. <laughs> Hang on, I got another one. I got another one for you. What? How are those weekly uploads coming along? <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna wrap up the video here and I know the last couple videos have been kind of huh and super chill and not a whole bunch of crazy stuff has been happening like my normal content. And that's mainly because of just so much stuff is happening behind the scenes right now that it is taking up all of my time and that means that then unfortunately the vlogs suffer a little bit because of that and I hate it, um, but uh, the best thing is, is everything we're doing behind the scenes, like looking for shop space, creating a new company here in Japan and all this type of stuff. There's a lot of paperwork that's been happening, going to the business bureau office and stuff over here and sorting everything out there. And like, it's been insane. Plus dealing with merch and all that type of stuff that's happening in JP Post, um, which by the way, tomorrow, at the end of tomorrow, everything will be done and finished for all orders um, from the giveaway. That has been one of my biggest frustrations and stress things like ever since coming back and I know it was completely out of my hands and out of my control because of COVID and JP Post and all the delays and all that type of stuff but it feels so good to know that all of that is finally done. We can you know look at the new merch drop that's coming next month and all that type of stuff and get pumped up. We can do some little giveaways again for merch. Um, a whole bunch of cool stuff coming but like Everything that's happening behind the scenes is literally going to end up being the craziest thing hopefully for next month to like literally hit the ground sprinting bigger and better than ever. Like getting a shop space is going to be huge for the channel. We're gonna be able to have massive builds happening. I can finally start digging into the Skyline, the Evo. There are so many things that that's gonna mean for us. It's gonna be insane, as well as the new company I'm creating and stuff. It's, it's, it's gonna be really, really cool. And uh, with this whole company thing that I'm creating, uh, just to give you a snippet, it's not like I'm gonna be making a new business and, and doing less YouTube or anything like that. It's just, a company to f facilitate like the merch shop and the YouTube channel and all that income and stuff like that because up until now I've still been you know sending everything to Australia and then transferring everything from Australia back to Japan and and it's just not a good way to do things so uh, I've decided to create a company here in Japan and bring all my income into Japan and it's 
it's been a nightmare, um, you know, paying tax and all that type of stuff in both places. It's expat stuff, like, you, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on behind the scenes while, like, you try to sort everything out financially. So, finally at a point where we can move everything and shift all of my stuff to Japan here locally, which means things are going to be so much easier and uh, it's just going to be epic. So, I hope you guys are pumped. I am excited because once everything's all sorted, it's it's gonna be so good for the channel, what I wanna do here, and everything that I'm about. And I hope you guys are excited, because I'm really pumped. So with that guys, smash that like button, write us a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, head to the merch store, link at the top of the description, grab yourself some fresh merch, support the Evo build and everything else that's coming. There is a fresh drop coming. Some of this stuff that's on the store right now is all limited, so that will all disappear very quickly soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say, but thanks guys. Appreciate each and every one of you, and I'm reminded daily that I would not be in the position that I'm in now to be able to do any of this stuff that I'm doing now if it wasn't for you guys, and that's the bottom line. So thank you so much, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Jamata.